Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the extra material on the uh, All Things Must Pass 50th Anniversary uh, edition. So that's the, the three extra discs on the CD version and the five extra LPs on the LP edition. Um, before we get into that, I uh, just wanna, wanted to say about the uh, tell you about the next video that's coming up on the channel, and that's going to be um, a look at the uh, All Things Must Pass uh, reminisces of um, Bobby Whitlock and asking the question, are they fact or fiction? Uh, is, he, is he reinventing history? So we're going to look at that. And before we uh, we get into it, um, just a little reminder, please give the video uh, a like and please, 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 please subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's a little button down there somewhere that you can click. Um, that'd be really fantastic. Um, anyway, let's get straight into, you know, into the, the, the outtakes and demos on, on all things must part because for a lot of people that is the reason why they would have bought the uh, you know the full box sets rather than just the smaller sets that just had just had the original uh, album in so a lot of it you know a lot of this stuff is really you know is not really of interest to the casual uh, George Harrison fan but for you know for you know for full on fans this this is kind of essential sort of stuff that we've wanted for for quite a while. Um, so the first, the first uh, disc, which is disc three, is the uh, day one demos, which in the main um, are the little band, uh, very, well, almost identical to the band that, that worked on the John Lennon Plastic Ono Band uh, album, uh, uh, apart from we've got George instead of John. So it, you've got Ringo on drums and Klaus Vormann uh, on bass uh, and then George on on guitars uh, and vocal on, on vocals so they they're all sort of you know it's quite charming to hear that hit you know hear these these li these little demos um, supposedly these were these were the the, the demos that um, uh, that George had to uh, play for Phil Spector uh, so he could analyze the, the material that was, you know, up on offer for this album, and you know, decide, you know, which songs were were going to be, you know, taken further um, than the, the demo stage. So it's always it's always interesting to hear demos um, if you know if you're a, you're a big fan because you know it's the it's hearing the very embryo of these songs. Um, you know how they began life uh, before the versions that we know so well on the uh, the LP. So let's get into it. So this three sort of starts off with um, all things must pass, which actually isn't uh, isn't anything new. Um, if you've got um, this this album, um, the George Harrison Early Takes Volume One. Don't know what happened to Volume Two. I guess this is it. Um, uh, that appears so, so it kicks off with a track that we've already already got um, uh, and then you get behind that locked door and then the next track um, I Live For You is is quite interesting because um, here we, ha we have the, the first sort of run through of that song with Ringo and Klaus um, but this this track was um, put out on the uh, on this album, the the, um, the 2001 uh, remaster, but not this not this version. So this this is the demo, um, and the um, the version on the on the 2001 was it was re-recorded later. Um, we think I think still with Ringo uh, on drums um, and. Probably Klaus still on bass, um, but the the other version um, has the ha, the other outtake had the the Pete Drake slide guitar parts on it, which are absolutely fantastic on you know on that on that version. And I think that George only retained 
uh, his vocal and um, the uh, Pete Drake input uh, on the 2001 version and, and, and played around a little bit with the with the drums, uh, the sound of the drums uh, on that. But here we get it in its very raw first, you know, take uh, state. Um, Apple Scruffs uh, and What Is Life, interesting, interesting versions, uh, but nothing really to, you know, to, you know, it's, you know, Apple Scruffs, just George on his own. Uh, what Is Life is with Klaus and Ringo. Um, and then we get um, A Waiting On You All, which is also, uh, the, the version that's on this is also on this, this album, so that's nothing new there. Uh, we get to uh, uh, Isn't It A Pity, it's just George on keys, and then sort of um, Klaus is, is kind of work, you can hear, he's kind of working out his bass part, and after about three minutes, he <laughs> he suddenly, you know, he's worked out what his, you know, his bass, his bass part is going to be. Um, and this version sort of, you know, includes a bit of sort of overzealous drumming um, from Ringo um, on the original version, uh, sorry, not the original version, the final version. He's, you know, he it, it's much more laid back, uh, suits the song better. Um, I'd Have You At Any Time is next, and that's just Georgia on electric guitar only so no one else playing on that now i dig love uh it's very interesting because it's completely different to the um the final version um it it shows how this song started and it started um really as a piece of sort of uh funk rock i suppose uh would be the best way of describing it so it's very it's very different so that makes it makes it interesting the next track, um, going down to Golders Green, uh, is a um, uh, it's a kind of a parody of a what you know an Elvis Sun Records uh, recording. Um, so it's it's interesting from that point of view. There's also um, I believe that this the, the version that's on here wasn't one of the Spectre demos. This was this. Recording, I think, comes from uh, the sessions for Doris Troy's album, um, which George produced and Ringo and Klaus played on. So it was kind of recorded during during those sessions. Um, and we think that the the story of this song uh, going down to Golders Green, Golders Green was where um, uh, Badfinger had their rehearse rehearsal studios. So. Um, it's kind of it's maybe kind of about that if you if if you're not familiar with london uh golders green is a is an area in north london not that far from um from abbey road the next one uh the next track dera um we see a clip a glimpse of this if you remember that in the anthology with uh with george paul and ringo um playing this in the in his in the garden at Fry, Fry Park, George plays ukulele, um, and he says that he wrote in in that clip. He says he wrote a lot of songs that he never recorded. Well, well, this one this was recorded, and um, I think the the song was first sort of conceived in the um, it, during the sessions for the Radha Krishna Temple um, album that George um, produced, um, and it's you know it's quite it's quite catchy. Um, but it's never going to really fit on this album. Um, it was never really going to make the fi final cut. It's not strong enough. Um, but interesting to hear uh, nonetheless. And um, the next one, Om Hari Om, uh, got Gopala Krishna. Um, again, it's sort of, you know, it's catchy, um, but it's quite monotonous. It quite, it goes on probably two minutes too, too long, I, I would say. But kind of interesting in the way that it sort of, you know it slows down and speeds up and stuff like that. Um, but if you're familiar with uh, the band Cooler Shaker from the 1990s sort of Britpop band, um, they had a, they had a track from uh, called Gov Govinda. And um, if you want to know where they got 
<laughs> they got bits of that song. Uh, have a listen to, to this track on on Ari on, um, because that's I think that there's a a, a little bit of um, influence there more than more than influence I would say. Um, the next track, uh, Ballad of Sir Frank, Frankie Kiss. Um, the lyrics um, are not really there yet, and um, we've got the um, the O Sir Frankie Kiss uh, is sung by Ringo uh, on 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 this version. Um, My sweet Lord is up next, and that um, uh, that ver the version on here is on this album again. So again, this is. A, Something that we already have that that version of um, my sweet lord and the album finish it the, the, the disc finishes uh, with sour milk milk sea which is acoustic run through um, I don't think this is as interesting as the um, the 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 Isha demos version that was on the white album um, box set uh, is my personal opinion but do let me know if you think it's uh, it's any better. CD4 is the day two demos and these are mostly just acoustic um, so it's just George only. Um, the, the, the thing about this 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 CD is if you've got the uh, the bootleg be, Beware of Abco it is identical to this this CD even the, the track running order is, is the same. But what we've got here is a much better recording um, of those songs. Uh, so this is not boot. This is not bootleg quality. Uh, this is much better, much better than that. So if you've got whereas whereas the, well, in in the um, the video when I talked about the, the the main album, you know, I said that the, the you know the nineteen seventy edition, you know, is still valid. Um, as, as far as the Beware of Abco uh, bootleg goes, that might as well go in the bin now if you've got that. Because if you've got if you've got this box set, because the, these are much better sounding uh, demos of the same material. So it starts with um, you get fifteen tracks. Um, it starts with Run of the Mill, um, and that is the version that is on this this album. Um, so we've al we've already had that. Art of Dying is just George on on his own. And the third track, uh, everybody, no nobody is interesting because this is the first um, incarnation of the Ballad of Frankie Crisp. So it starts off with the O of Frankie Crisp, um, and if you you know if you listen to the chords that have been played, it's the same. They are the same as. Um, the Ballad of Frankie Crisp, um, but it was completely, re obviously completely reworked. The lyrics completely reworked as well. Only the O Sir Frankie Crisp remain. Um, the rest of the song seems to be about driving and cars for some reason. Um, On to Wah Wah, which is just George with the um, electric guitar. Uh, there's occasional bass um, from uh, from Klaus uh, on, on that. The next track, um, "Window Window," is interesting because um, if you know the, the the story of George when he he walked out uh, on the on the Beatles during the the Let It Be sessions, when he came back, um, this was the first song that he presented to the Beatles as a uh, as a possible Beatles song um, for for Let It Be, um, which was uh, rejected. Basically, um, they they tried it a few times. Uh, they even tried it with with Paul singing. And once Paul sort of took over the vocals on it, as he sort of took over quite a lot of things during those sessions, uh, it, it no longer became a viable prospect for George, um, and it was quickly forgotten. But I the, the, there's a really nice lyric in this song. Uh, uh, yeah, I look out the window and see, but I get a feeling it doesn't see me. Very nice. I, I like that. Next track up was is the first take of Beautiful Girl, which if you know the 33 and the 3rd album, that's a, one of the best tracks on that album. 
Um, the lyrics uh, for the verse were all there uh, back in 1970. The only bit that was added later was the is the bit where um, when I saw the way she 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 smiled at me, I knew it there and then that she was a one. That was that isn't in this version. Uh, that's something that was added later. Um, Beware of darkness. Um, again, we we see this in its very early uh, early stage, and it was um, it was included on the um, on the thirtieth uh, anniversary version. Um, so we do have this one already. But the interesting thing about this is that the lyrics were all there, um, apart from one bit that was changed. Um, the, the bit that on the final version that says, um, as each unconscious sufferer wanders aimlessly, beware of Maya. In this version, he sings, uh, pushing you in puddles in the dead of night, beware of Abco. So that's, um, that's where the title of the bootleg comes from. Um, so that's just the interesting thing about that. The version of Let It Down, uh, which is here, where George in, in, introduces the song, this is called Let It Down, appears on this but on this version uh, George has overdubbed some little acoustic guitar licks um, which aren't on the version on here um, so that's really the only difference the next track t uh, tell me what happened to you uh, doesn't really do it for me uh, pretty disposable um, uh, hear me Lord uh, is George solo on electric guitar rather than acoustic um, the next track, uh, Nowhere to Go, which was um, a track written with Bob Dylan at the same time as they wrote um, I'd Have You Any Time. But there doesn't really appear to be too much Bob Dylan influence in, in this song. Especially the, the lyric is very is very George and, you know, he, he says things like, I'm tired of being Beatle Jeff, talking to the deaf. And... Um, it sounds like a, a, just a bit of a moan of how he was feeling uh, during that period. This, this was 1968 when this was written. Um, and he talks about, in the, in the song, he talks about, you know, basically not being listened to by the other Beatles. Um, and also about the, the drug bust that he had in 1968. So that's kind of mentioned in the song. So it's... It's really quite interesting from that point of view, and for me, um, this is the pick of the um, you know the un unreleased songs um, on on this album. So I, I really like that. Cosmic Empire is is next again acoustic, and it's quite joyous. Um, the next song, Mother Divine, which is one of those songs that he sort of started the trend. Uh, he's written a few like this um, where you can't really tell whether he's talking uh, about God or he's talking about a woman um, he sort of did that on Long 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 um, and he does it again here with his song Mother, Mother Divine um, the next track up is the, um, I Don't Want to Do It which is a Bob Dylan cover um, which was eventually recorded properly for the Por uh, Porky's 2 soundtrack and the CD closes with another version of um, If Not For You, um, obviously without the sort of the embellishments, but this is just an acoustic uh, run through. On to uh, CD5, which is the outtakes and Apple Jams. Um, my only complaint uh, about this disc, which is um, my favourite of all the, all, all the outtakes, um, is where's the rest of it? I mean, there must have been loads of outtakes and we need to hear more of these because they are really great hearing these versions of the, of the songs as they grow into the versions that we know about um, in a much more strip, stripped down format. It's really great hear, hearing these without all the overdubs and stuff. So it starts off with a bit of bit of comedy really uh, uh, isn't it a pity take 14 where uh, George just sings isn't it so shitty isn't it a pain that we do so many takes and we're doing it again and that's it that's it that's all you get 
Um, it then moves on to um, the first proper take of Wawa, uh, which is the first, you know, the first proper run through with the full the full band, uh, and it is an absolute delight in this sort of stripped down version with that out, you know, so much going on that that, that happened on the fin you know, on the finished version. Uh, it's really nice to hear. Um, I'd have you any time take five. This is a bit faster than the finished version and the drumming uh, is much more robust um, and I think as it you know the laid back final version suits the song much better um, and um, you notice from this version that, that uh, Eric Clapton hadn't quite worked out his, uh, his solo just yet. Next track is uh, Art of Dying, this is the first take of this one and this this is the opposite really of uh, of I'd have you any time. This one is much more laid back and less sinister than the you know the released version, uh, and it's nice to hear the sort of the piano jangling away throughout. But it's all a little bit too jolly for this sort of type of song. Uh, the lyrics not all there yet. He uh, he sings about a perfect cup of tea, which he eventually replaced with a uh, perfect entity. Um, then we get Isn't It a Pity take 27. So 27 takes so far. Uh, it just shows, you know, how much of this material is, you know, is around. Uh, still it, still in the vaults. Um, you know, we could have got so, so much more. They could probably could have made two, maybe three discs of of really great outtakes which would have been great to hear um, but with Isn't It A Pity it's still very stripped down uh, even by take 27 you know they hadn't yet decided on how it was going to build to this big crescendo at the end and if you notice the drums that you know that it's Ringo and he's not even using like a full kick it's a full kick it's just kick drum and hi hat even at even at take twenty seven, um, so that shows you that there was still sort of a long way to go before they got to the final version. Um, if not for you, uh, take two, pretty much by take two it was already fully formed, um, but otherwise it's pretty much already there. The next track uh, is a, a is a jam rather than an outtake. Wedding bells. Are breaking up that old gang of mine. Uh, this is a, a song from 1929, and uh, I, I mean George was aware of it because it was covered by uh, uh, Gene Vincent, um, and it you know it was never really considered for the album. This is just them having a bit of a laugh and a, a, a play about. We then move on to, to what is life. The very first take of this with the full band, um, no guitar intro at the start but it's already it's already got that real upbeat feeling and it's again it's much more stripped back um, the horns are already on it but not in full and it's got a guitar solo which was not on the final version so that's an interesting thing about that one um, Beware of Darkness take 8 uh, this is almost fully formed uh, the lyrics are all there and you know, if you listen, there, there's there's lots of guitar twiddly bits uh, interspersed into the song, um, some of which made the final cut but are very subdued in the mix, uh, and some were just lost. Um, the next one, which is my favourite uh, of all the outtakes uh, on this disc, is uh, the Hear, Hear Me Lord, Take 5. It is a real highlight for me. Um, there's nine and a half minutes of this and an absolutely fantastic guitar solo, uh, which I think is Eric Clapton. Um, Let It Down, take one, so the first run through of this. Um, you know, this is just the ballad part of it. The heavy bit hadn't been established yet. Um, and as this is one of the songs that is probably, you know, one of the one that's the that's most laden with spectrisms. Um, it just sounds 
so beautifully mellow in this sort of stripped down version. This is a real joy. Uh, the next track, um, Down to the River, uh, Rocking Chair Jam. This is <laughs> a, a blues with some yodeling um, in it. I mean, maybe it could have been a song, but it wouldn't have really fitted with the rest of the album. It's not really in line with the other songs that, that, that did make it, so I can kind of see why it was left off. Um, eventually, this was reworked as um, Rocking Chair in Hawaii, which George uh, recorded for, for the uh, Brainwashed album. Um, and probably the most notable thing at this is, at some point during the song, George shouts out, so fucking what? We then get a, a take of Get Back. So this is now two, two solo Beatles that have had a go at, at Get Back in their sessions. This version is better than John's effort, um, but it's still pretty forgettable. Um, the most interesting thing about this song is, is George sort of halfway through the song calling out to Mal Evans to get a mop and another glass of orange juice as he, he obviously spilt his um, during the recording. <laughs> Um, the next one is almost 12 bar honk. Now this um, this is an apple jam, and this is probably this it sound it sounds like the apple jam that we got on the on the the album. It sounds like there's lots of players on it. Um, it's instrumental, like most of the other stuff that's that's on the apple jam. Uh, I guess that you know it's got some nice guitar work in it, but eight and a half minutes does go on a bit um, and um, so this is probably one that they decided to leave off the uh, Apple Jam. Uh, next is a you know another ru a run through of It's Johnny's Birthday there's not really much to say about that um, and the final track of the 17 on on this CD um, is uh, Woman Don't You Cry For Me Take 5 so this is the song that was eventually ended up on 33 and third the second one from these sessions um that was written that long ago and didn't make it until 1976 so obviously that tells us a little bit about where george was at in 1976 having to draw on old material to get enough you know new stuff for it, for his new album um but this version is take five so they had several goes at this so it was probably a real contender um, for this, for, for all things must pass, um, the fact that they did five takes of it. It's much more bluesy uh, at this stage. Um, he wrote it in 1969 and supposedly this is the first song that he wrote purposely um, for the sort of the guitar, the slide guitar technique that he learned playing with Delaney and Bonnie. Um, Whereas, the, and the final version is much more funky um, than this. So that's that's it. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the um, about the Apple Jams, um, the the um, the ones that were were released on the original album. So on on the fiftieth anniversary, they're not remixed. Um, they are remastered, um, and what what they've done with this is that they've retained the original sequencing from the 1970 version. If you remember the, the 30th anniversary version, they swapped um, out of the blue from being the first track on side one to the last track on side two. Um, now this is this has gone back to the original version. And, <coughs> you know, the, the Apple Jams for me uh, are not really... Um, they're not really that interesting, uh, um, and I rarely, rarely play them. Um, I think that they, you know, they're too, they're, they're too long. Plug me in is okay. Uh, but I remember Jeep at uh, eight minutes is way too long. Uh, Thanks for the pepperoni is okay around five minutes, but out of the blue, eleven minutes uh, is probably about eight minutes too long. Um, now a lot of people that you know count um, uh, all things must pass. Uh, sorry, the Apple Jam 
as part of the All Things Must Pass album. Um, and when they reviewed it, they you know they mark it, they mark down All Things Must Pass because of the Apple Jam because it's you know they they're considering it as a triple album uh, and saying that you know the first four sides are fantastic, but but then the whole thing is is brought down by the Apple Jams, which is just filler. Um, but that wasn't George's intention uh, in the first place. You know, the the album was advertised as a you know as a double album with a bonus uh, a, with a bonus album. So you're kind of getting that for free, and it's quite obvious that this isn't isn't part of the you know the structured all things must pass um, album. So I just wanted to sort of you know make that point. Um, so that's about it. Um, Thanks very much for watching. I know this has been a long, uh, long video, um, but I hope you found some of the insights um, interesting. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can hit the sort of button that's sort of around here somewhere. Um, that'd be really great. Or uh, on the on the end screen, uh, if you if you click the circular picture of me, that'll subscribe you as well um let's try and get the, the the subscriber numbers up um would be really nice anyway thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the next video